In just a few minutes from now, President Trump will sign the Great American Outdoors Act. It's an investment that will pump about $3 billion into our national parks and public lands. It's the biggest investment in outdoor recreation this country has seen in about 65 years. And all week long, we here are looking at how people are turning to the great outdoors after being cooped up inside for months during this pandemic. And today we have with us Mike Spitzen. He is the CFO of Polaris. And of course, the company's off-road vehicle and motorcycle sales going through the roof during this pandemic, up 57% in the most recent quarter. Mike, good to see you here. Give us an idea of how business is looking right now. And I'm curious how many of your customers are first-time customers just discovering these off-road vehicles. Well, good morning, Alexis, and thanks for having me. Um, things are going quite well. As we talked about on our earnings call, uh, July, we had anticipated things to slow down. Uh, and as of uh, the earnings call, things were still moving at a very, uh, very good clip. Uh, we talked on the call about the fact that almost 75% of the customers that we saw in the second quarter were actually new to Polaris. Um, and what we're seeing is that's bringing in a whole new uh, diverse set of riders, uh, younger, more families. We're seeing the the sale of our what we call crew vehicles, so multi-passenger where we can sit four to six people in either a Ranger or a Razor. Uh, those sales have been incredibly strong, as have our value models, which is usually indicative of new people coming into the space. So certainly a lot of new entrants coming in. Mike, you're, you're the numbers guy uh, there at Polaris, and you put out guidance. Uh, we're not seeing that from a lot of companies. What are, you, what are you seeing in the second half of the year that would give you confidence to put, out an, out, put an outlook out? Yeah, we, um, Brian, good to see you. We had pulled guidance because of the uncertainty we saw back in uh, what happened in late March. I mean, our retail had dropped off significantly. Um, what we saw was the strength uh, that started in April and then continued in earnest in uh, May and June and has obviously continued in July. And when we look at the channel of inventory that we have with our dealers, we know that we can be producing pretty much at full capacity for the balance of the year just to get the dealers close to uh, where they need to be uh, in terms of having uh, available products. And, you know, that coupled with uh, the work we did around our recession planning, putting our recession playbook to work, gave us a lot of confidence in terms of the liquidity of the company, the cost structure of the company as we look forward for the balance of the year. And we felt giving investors uh, insight into how we were feeling about the company was going to be key because we knew there would be many others that may not be doing that. And, and certainly that played well with uh, the stock's reaction uh, that we had shortly after the call. Have you been surprised, uh, Mike, at some of the results you did in fact see in June and July? Pontoon boats sale uh, are hot. Indian motorcycle sales hot. Uh, we're in a recession here, and, and these these items they're pretty expensive. Yeah, it certainly surprised us. I mean, Scott talked about the fact that we missed our expectations by a country mile, uh, and essentially, you know, we had expected retail was going to be down twenty or thirty percent. We used you know past recessions as an indicator. And I think what's different about this one is that the underlying consumers are still very strong. I mean, you can see it in the reports that have come out in terms of income levels were up in the second quarter, personal saving rates were up in the second quarter, you had a lot of stimulus in the system and people didn't have a lot to do. They were canceling <clears throat> vacations, they were canceling uh, trips and, and really looking for something they could do with their family in a safe way. And in so many ways, our products enable that, as I mentioned earlier, whether it's a pontoon boat, or it's a multi-passenger side-by-side, or even just motorcycles where they can get out with a group of friends and be able to ride and do the proper level of social distancing. All of our products are playing very well to that. I know that your dealerships, a lot of them had to shut down um, because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Have people been buying online more, um, a sort of sight unseen, if you will? And I know you also have a program where you're using technology to help people make the purchase. It's called Ride Ready. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so we did a couple of things. I mean, our, our power sports dealerships where we sell Rangers and Razors, uh, they did shut down, but they were able to open quickly under the CISA requirements. And a lot of that has to do with we supply municipalities with products. And so they were deemed essential. Uh, boats and motorcycles, the dealerships took a little bit longer. Uh, motorcycles eventually got added to the CISA list for transportation. And then boats, really, the dealerships started to open when the economy started to open under you know the various state mandates. Um, we did a click deliver ride program, which essentially allowed people to buy vehicles by contacting through a portal that we established 
contacting our dealers and do it really in a contactless manner where the vehicle would be delivered to them. Um, you're right, we introduced a, a process called Ride Ready, which essentially is mobile service. One of the things that we know is that a lot of our customers don't return to dealers uh, to have their vehicles taken care of. They either do it themselves or they don't. And one of the big hurdles is how do you transport a vehicle into a dealership? That coupled with the current environment we're in with social distancing and not wanting to have a lot of contact seemed like a prime opportunity for us to put that mobile service out. And it's it's enabled by an app. Customers can go in, they can use the customer portal to load their vehicle in, put the specific services or accessories they want and have that all taken care of at their home or have the vehicle picked up and taken to the dealership. How have you seen, uh, there, uh, your main rival in the motorcycle business, uh, Harley Davidson, has really been struggling. New CEO, my sources tell me they have been laying off a good number of folks internally. How have their struggles uh, helped Indian over the past few months? Well, you know, I think there's a couple of things. One, demographics, um, you know, Harley's strength is its brand. One of the weaknesses is also just the strength of that brand with a specific customer segment. Uh, the Indian brand plays to a lot of different um, elements of the uh, demographics, and we've seen that play out. Our ridership uh, is much younger, more diverse. Uh, the sale of our midsize bikes, so the Scout lineup, uh, has been incredibly long, uh, strong as well. And that really just points to people looking for maybe something a little bit different from a brand standpoint. Uh, the one thing we have seen from them uh, here recently is, you know, they've constricted the amount of inventory going into the dealers, and they've pulled a lot pull the back on uh, promotional spending, which has been helpful for us because that puts us in a position where we're not having to discount motorcycles uh, and we can really just play to the brand strength that we have. You also have uh, one of your brands, Sturgis, um, gonna be holding its 80th anniversary motorcycle rally in South Dakota. Uh, I think over 200,000 people expected to be involved. What do you make of that move during this time, during this pandemic? Well, you know, I know from our standpoint, we're planning to, to approach it in a very careful manner. We're limiting the number of employees that will be exposed. We're really leveraging our dealerships. You know, our dealerships have uh, proved they've got a true capability to ensure customer safety uh, so that as we do demo rides uh, and allow people to experience our products, uh, we'll do it in a way that keeps them safe and make sure that we're keeping the employees and the dealership employees safe that are, that are interacting. But it, it's an important part of the business in terms of getting customers the ability to you know, have access to the vehicles and get to touch and feel uh, and see uh, how great the products can be in, in that part of the world. You know, do, you, do you think snowmobiles, uh, you also own a, a, obviously are pretty big in snowmobiles. How do you see that business playing out in the fall? Yeah, we're, uh, you know, we, we in many ways created the snowmobile segment. The company started in Roseau, Minnesota, up north, and, uh, you know, it's a big part of our heritage and our heart. Um, we've come out with uh, some great platforms. There was a lot of excitement. We were fortunate enough to be able to do our snow dealer uh, meeting down in Dallas, Texas, right before everything shut down from COVID. And the excitement from the dealers, I was there uh, with uh, with our investors as well as our team. And the excitement from dealers was just off the charts. Uh, we do a snow check program where there's advanced orders. Uh, we do a lot of customization. Uh, we're very confident. Now, obviously, uh, nobody can predict what's going to happen with uh, the snow conditions. But assuming we get, uh, you know, a decent uh, winter playout, I think we're in a position to continue to take share like we did last year. All right, Polaris CFO Mike Speetson. Good to see you here this morning. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me.